Let's take a brief look at the Yakuza Character Pack DLC. This was the fourth paid character pack released for Payday 2, and marked the beginning of a side plot that at the time of this video's release is still in the works. This DLC adds Jiro, a 50 plus year old ex-Yakuza, showcased by the intricate tattoos weaved across his entire body. Jiro traveled all the way from Japan to the States in search of his son, Kento. His backstory is detailed in a beautifully animated trailer from Overkill, which you can check out by clicking the button up in the corner. The amount of detail put into his origin story is excellent and has been incorporated into a side plot for Payday 2. The Search for Kento event, for instance, follows the crew as they track down targets with information on where Kento is. I did coverage of this event, that playlist is again linked up in the corner. However, that story has yet to reach its conclusion, so let's instead focus on Jiro himself. Of all the new concepts the Yakuza character pack brought to Payday 2, the biggest one doubles as the most apparent. Jiro speaks Japanese effectively exclusively. This has been the source of a lot of criticism for Jiro as a character, considering his voice and visual actor, Togo Igawa, speaks fluent English. However, measures have been taken to ensure that Jiro's lines, for the most part, can still be understood by the more monolingual among us. In most cases, you can simply listen out for contextually sensitive names, such as Shield or Dallas. And besides, unless you're a first-time heister, understanding the full content of the voice lines isn't particularly crucial provided you're paying attention. I'm personally fond of Jiro's dialogue as someone who can usually pick up on what he's saying despite a minimal understanding of Japanese. His character as a whole is brilliantly done and I cannot wait to see how the Kento storyline concludes. Let's move on to his perk deck, aptly named Yakuza. The core concept behind this deck is when your health is below half, you'll move 20% more quickly and regenerate armor 60% faster. At the cost of not regenerating generating health from third-party sources such as Gambler. While this all sounds well and good, I'm personally not a fan. There's no dodge bonuses, meaning it won't work as a dodge perk, and there's no armor or health bonuses, meaning, in my opinion, it's flawed as an armor perk. Obviously, Yakuza is designed to work with the Berserker and Frenzy skills to keep your health low. These skills will increase your damage resistance and output while ensuring Yakuza's effects remain constantly active. While a fun build for sure, I'd hardly call it practical. I'd much rather just use Armorer, Muscle, or Anarchist for a tankier armor build, and if I wanted to go fast, I could run dodge just as easily. As for Yakuza's armor regeneration, due to Payday 2's armor mechanics, this ability is not nearly as potent as it sounds. When a player is being shot at, even if the bullets aren't actually hitting them, their armor cannot regenerate. This is called suppression. This means the only time your armor can actually regenerate is when you're out of a gunfight for a moment. Don't get me wrong, faster armor regeneration is by no means completely useless, but an entire perk deck revolved around it, in my opinion, is. Unless you're playing stealth funny enough, Yakuza is actually a potent perk deck for stealth of all things. When you start the heist, get to a corner separated from the action, chuck down some Molotovs to get to low HP, and now you'll be running at sonic speeds. Many speedrunners use Yakuza for stealth runs, often in combination with frenzy to skip out on the Molotov part altogether. While I personally prefer Burglar for my stealth runs, I can't discount the benefits of moving so absurdly fast for certain stealth heists such as Shadow Raid. Overall, Yakuza is not my cup of tea, but with practical use in stealth and entertainment value in loud, I can't discredit it entirely. Moving on, let's discuss this DLC's weaponry, starting with the Micro Uzi SMG. Another unique addition, the Micro Uzi's main advantage is the intense concealment, making it a great choice for dodge builds with less concealed primaries. While this does mean that it will not synergize with the Yakuza perk deck all that well, the free rogue perk deck will work just fine with this SMG. Get yourself low blow to score crits aplenty with a staggering 1200 RPM and the deepest reserves of any secondary in the game, you won't find yourself struggling to shred enemies in close quarters. However, the poor accuracy even when 
modded will get you in the end when it comes to distant targets. This isn't helped by a complete lack of optical modification. In fact, the iron sights are slanted in a unique style, which could make aiming a bit difficult to get used to. While the Micro Uzi can reach 32 concealment, far higher than most weapons can even dream of reaching, the Bernetti 9 is a base game weapon that can hit 34 concealment. Granted, I consider the Bernetti a far and away inferior firearm compared to the Micro Uzi, so if you want a highly concealed secondary in a dodge build without sacrificing practicality, the Micro Uzi is a great choice. And finally, the Shin Sakuto Katana. Normally I'd only make quick mention of a DLC's melee as they tend to be common and uninteresting. However, the Katana still holds a place in both the meta and players' hearts. Once upon a time, the Katana was considered the best melee in the game, and it's still a potent choice to this day. Offering higher than average damage and a superbly swift swing speed, the Katana is still one of the kings of melee for armor builds, not to mention the unique attributes it attains when it's matched with Jiro. Jiro has unique lines when using the Katana, shouting as he aggressively slices and dices. <laughs> On top of this, in the rare situation you can melee kill a cloaker after having charged the katana for at least two seconds, you will decapitate or bisect the beast. This is incredibly satisfying, although it's a little upsetting that you have to charge the weapon so long to achieve this effect. The katana is best used with swift strikes and only charged for larger targets like bulldozers. If you want to get the most out of this weapon, skills in the brawler tree would be ideal, such as berserker and frenzy. This means that this weapon indirectly pairs well with Yakuza. Overall, the Katana is still my favorite melee weapon given its deadly nature and stylish flair. And that's just about it. So, was the Yakuza character pack a good addition? I personally think so. While Yakuza isn't the best perk deck for Loud, it finds a presumably unintended use in stealth. The weaponry is excellent, although maybe not when used together, as they're designed for wildly different build styles. And Jiro himself, despite his limited English being problematic for some people, his voice delivery and backstory are excellent. I'm so excited to see Jiro and Kento finally reunite. Thanks for watching, and take it easy.